will probably never view the uh, Rocky theme the same ever again after having <laughs> shared in this wonderful bumper that uh, Aaron Johnson did. When it comes uh, to the economy, it is without a doubt a challenging time. And that with a prospect of even more challenging times to come. High inflation is taking a toll on families, many of whom are living paycheck to paycheck because of the, the high prices. That's all the more reason to consider our physical fitness. That's F-I-S-C-A-L, fitness, physical fitness. As you know, we have attempted a health assessment over the past few weeks, an assessment of our health from God's perspective. We have used the book of Proverbs as our guide. All along, we have found that uh, Proverbs takes a practical yet spiritual bent on things. If you remember, we have talked about health as it relates to body, mind, and spirit. We have considered what it means to be healthy emotionally. We have considered what it means to maintain uh, healthy relationships, friends, and family. Today, as we close out this series, we wrap things up by uh, talking about financial health. The book of Proverbs has a lot to say about such things, again, with a, a practical yet spiritual bent on things. Whether we like it or not, money is very much a, a part of life. How we deal with it has tremendous impact upon our lives, the, the whole of life. Again, there's an intrinsic whole to, to this stuff that's called health. Let's turn then to God's Word and hear what it has to say on this subject, particularly as we read these uh, selected passages from the book of Proverbs. First, from Proverbs 13, 11. Dishon dishonest money dwindles away, but whoever gathers money little by little makes it grow. From Proverbs 6, 6 through 8. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler, yet it stores its provision in summer and gathers its food at harvest. Proverbs 22, 7 reads, The rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is slave to the lender. From Proverbs 3, 9 and 10, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of your crops, then your barns will be filled to the overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. From Proverbs 22, 9. The generous will, will share themselves, will themselves be blessed, for they share their food with the poor. From Proverbs 3, 27. Do not hold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to act. And then finally, from Proverbs 30, 7 through 9, two things I ask of you, Lord. Do not refuse me before I die. Keep falsehood and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Otherwise, I may have too much and disown you and say, who is the Lord? Or I may become poor and steal and so dishonor the name of my God. This is God's word for God's people. May it be a deep and abiding blessing to each of us, not only as we hear this word read, but as we make effort now to take uh, this word and apply it to our lives. May God bless us all. There is seemingly uh, no limit to those offering their services to help with financial planning. Free steak dinners are offered as an enticement, of course, with a, with a sales pitch. R radio programs abound, particularly on Saturday mornings. Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace University has helped thousands. Crown Financial has as well. It is good to sit down and do 
financial planning. It's not always easy to do, not always uh, uh, the easiest thing to get yourself to the table with others and, and try to work out things. You've heard it said, though, that if you uh, fail to plan, you plan to fail. That is certainly true when it comes to finances and financial planning. Fi financial planning is, is important for couples to do. It is something that I, I talk about with every uh, young couple that, that comes uh, to present themselves for marriage. As a part of that premarital counseling, we, we talk about the importance of financial planning. More importantly, we, we talk about the importance of communicating about such things. Given the fact that money is one of the greatest stressors of a young marriage, notwithstanding any marriage, it is important that, that those who are married at least talk about such things. Again, it is good to have a plan. The book of Proverbs uh, talks about uh, finances in, in a lot of different ways from a lot of different points of view. The, the book of Proverbs talks about being intentional when it comes to money. It, at Proverbs 13, 11, it says, whoever gathers money little by little makes it grow. One of my vi most vivid memories as a child was going with my mom to Greater Louisville Savings and Loan and opening up a, a savings account. I even got a little bank. It really wasn't much. It wasn't a toaster, but it was a little bank to help me save my nickels and dimes. I will confess that I had a lot of pennies that went into that bank as well. Every little bit helps. Little by little really did pay off. The numbers these days don't lie. Through November 2022, Americans were saving roughly 3.3% of their disposable income. That's a long way off from the pandemic highs of 16.8% in 2020 and 16, 12% rather in 2021. The 3.3% that we mentioned as a low is the, the second only to the 2.5% in 2025. In fact, and, and hear this, the 10 lowest saving rates have all been since 1999. I'd say that is uh, some sort of trend. And remember, little by little really does pay off. That will never happen unless we are intentional. The book of Proverbs is also clear about uh, being uh, industrious, which of course contributes to our financial well-being. Proverbs takes a very dim view on laziness and sloth. There are a number of Proverbs throughout the entire book that, that, that focus on that subject. Proverbs calls on each of us to consider the ant. We are to consider its ways and how it stores its provisions in the summer and gathers its food at the harvest. We would much prefer that that would be outside the house rather than inside our homes. Consider yourself blessed if your work is fulfilling and adds value not only to your life but to the life of others. Not a life of laziness, not a life of sloth, but, but a life of work that adds fulfillment, adds value, not only to your life, but to the life of others. Work becomes even more meaningful when we do it as unto the Lord, that we're not just toiling, but that we have this, this focus upon God and His direction and leadership for our lives, that He is helping us in our work, and that He is working through us for the betterment of all. Paul writes in Colossians 3, 23 through 24, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for men, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. You've heard of the so-called 
Protestant work ethic. It's just sort of in, ingrained in us, at least to some degree. What work we do, we are to do as to the Lord, even as a matter of grace. The Protestant work ethic is a concept that was coined by sociologist Max Weber way back in 1905. Weber hypothesized that, that northern European countries were more economically productive than southern European ones because their Protestant, Protestant bent promoted the values of labor and discipline. In contrast with, with Roman Catholicism, which valued ceremony and confession, Luther, the, the great reformer, saw work as an obligation that benefited both the individual and society. To work diligently was a sign of grace. Of course, we know that without some sort of workplace balance, things can get sideways really quick. There's nothing healthy about being out of balance when it comes to work. The same is true when we don't put ourselves into work. You know, there's been a lot of talk these days about quiet quitting. Have you heard that term? It, it, it denotes those that choose, consciously choose, not to apply themselves at work. Proverbs calls on us to consider the ant and the industriousness of the ant. Well, here's uh, yet another bit of wisdom from the book of Proverbs regarding financial health. It, it has to do with being prudent. Proverbs talks a lot about in, indebtedness. In fact, we read in Proverbs 22, 7 that the borrower is slave to the lender. So much of our economy is built on lending and borrowing money. We have seen recently how a favorable interest rate impacts the economy and how things suffer when that rate is less than favorable. It has been said that the average American is one who drives a bank-financed car over a bond-financed road using gasoline bought with a credit card to travel to a nearby store to open yet another charge account to then fill that person's house, highly mortgaged, if you will, with furniture that's purchased on the installment plan. You're almost out of breath hearing about all that debt. Overall, consumer debt has gone through the roof. Today, it is at a record high of 6.9% trillion dollars. And delinquencies are on the rise. Dave Ramsey, who we mentioned just a second ago, takes a hard line about such things. If you listen to Rams Ramsey very much, if you read uh, anything that he has written, you know that he has sort of a, 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 a no tolerance when it comes to debt. He recites uh, Proverbs 22.7 all the time that the uh, borrower is slave to the lender. Ramsey is all about telling people not to get into debt. And if those same people are in debt, to get out of it as quickly as they can. People will come on his show every week and yell, we're debt free at the top of their lungs. I will say that there is something freeing about being out of debt. We talked a little bit earlier about saving little by little. Debt is the opposite of saving, and expensive at that. We do well to be prudent in that regard. As Ram Ramsey is wont to say, live like no one else now so that you can live like no one else later on. That leads to a couple of other things that each of us should aspire to. These things uh, very clearly and pointedly mentioned in all sorts of places throughout the book of Proverbs. The first has to do with honoring the Lord with what we have. And the other 
involves generosity, particularly to the poor. These two have everything to do with our relationship with God and how we live our lives. Proverbs challenges us to honor the Lord with our wealth, with the first fruits of our crops. Then our barns will be filled to the overflowing and our vats will brim over with wine. Now hear this. If the barns don't overflow, then certainly our hearts will, particularly as we honor the Lord with all that we are and all that we do. When we honor the Lord with our giving, we let go of that which has a hold upon our lives. Let's face it. Our um, possessions all too often have a way of possessing us rather than the other way around. That's why the book of Proverbs talks so much about giving to the poor. When we give, we release that which has a hold upon our lives. There is nothing more freeing than letting go. Proverbs 22.9 says this, the generous will themselves be blessed, for they share their food with the poor. We receive an abundant and inherent blessing when we give. It just happens. We are blessed whenever we turn and give, particularly when we give to those that have so much less than ourselves. God has, all, has a way of working when we do that, he's able to, to bless the person. But, but interestingly, we find ourselves blessed because we, we, we know and understand, one, that we have been wonderfully blessed by God, and two, as we re release those blessings, those blessings come back to us in return. God uses us not only to, to meet the needs of another person, but to meet the deep need in us to express the same love that we have first received from him. So, from Proverbs 3, 27, do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to act. Let's be honest with ourselves. It is in our power to act more times than we would ever care to admit. Those opportunities are around us all the time. So then the question comes, how will you manage your money? It all comes down to how you view things. You can figure that what is mine is, is mine, and I'm going to hold on to it just as tightly as I can. Or you can think that what is mine is really God's. And it comes to me to be a good steward of that. I love this story of a, of a man who lived on a very modest income. He was talking one day with um, one of the owners of the company he, he worked for when he said to, to the boss, you know, I am richer than you are. And the boss sort of grumbled a little bit, and he, and he, and he said, how do, you, how do you figure that? And the man replied, because I have all the money I want, and you don't. There's some real truth in that. Proverbs has a wonderful prayer near the very end of the book. It's in the 30th chapter. It is a prayer that is prayed by uh, a guy by the name of Agur. It is as full of wisdom today as it was the day that it was first prayed. Hear that prayer yet again from Proverbs 30, verses 7 through 9. Two things I ask of you, Lord. Do not refuse me before I die. Keep falsehood and, and lies far from me. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Now hear that again. Give me neither poverty nor riches, but give me only my daily bread. Otherwise, I may have 
too much and disown and say, uh, who is the Lord? Or I may become poor and steal and so dishonor the name of my God. So whether rich or poor or anywhere in between, may it be that our focus is upon God. So let's let this prayer be our prayer as we seek to be physically fit. F-I-S-C-A-L-L-Y. Let's do that by being industrious, by being intentional, by being prudent, by being generous, and above all things, seeking to honor God in all that we do. So let's think about these things as we seek to be healthy, healthy even financially, knowing that that has great impact upon the rest of life. Let's pray together. Thank you so much, God, for your every blessing. Thank you for touching us in the many, many ways that you do. God, we realize daily that you provide uh, just what we need. We pray in the Lord's Prayer, uh, give us thou uh, our daily bread. And we know that you, you do that. And even as you do that, you, you set us to be uh, full of faith in that day, looking forward to your, your grand provision in the days to come. Lord, we seek to lay ourselves into your care. In a tough and uncertain time, we, uh, we pray for your provision. May you make yourself known. May it be that uh, we are rejoicing uh, at your goodness and grace. We thank you, Lord, for the wisdom of Proverbs. We have uh, learned much over these past weeks. We pray that we are uh, putting what you are speaking through the book of Proverbs at play in our lives. And in that, may we truly honor you. We love you. We need you. We seek to give you our lives. We praise you for the grand good news that is Christ. We praise you that you have claimed us as your own. May we uh, give ourselves to you. And in that, may we uh, find ourselves truly healthy and always radiating uh, your goodness, your grace, your work in our lives. This prayer we make in the name of Jesus, our Lord, trusting in the power of that name for today's world. Amen. Let's lend our voices in praise to the Lord. Uh, let's uh, stand and we'll share together in that great hymn, hymn uh, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Stand if you're able. Let's uh, offer our praises to God.